everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm acrylic artist Joni Young and today I'm showing you step by step how to paint this fantasy piece titled Up in the Sky. We're working on a 9x12 double primed canvas. We're going to get started with a filbert brush and white paint, phthalo blue. So I'll just squeeze out a little of each. I'll get my brush a little bit wet and then start pulling out from the center into that white and I'm just going to cover almost the entire canvas and you can just paint it any way you like. So I'm just going to wash all of that blue out of my brush, take a little bit more white and squeeze a little bit out in each corner. I've got a medium sized mop brush, it's dry, and I'm going to start by dusting small little circles to softly blend it in and create some lighter tones of this blue color that we have here so that we can start creating some clouds. I've got a little liner brush here and you can use any liner brush that you feel comfortable with. I'm getting it slightly wet and dipping it into that uh, white paint and I'm not using titanium white yet. I'm using a looser, more liquid type of white just because it's easier to work with for creating these little clouds. And I'm just making lots of little half circles and little scoops just to add some little peaks and interest to these clouds. And now I'm going to take a little fan brush and I'm going to demonstrate how you can add some more details and types of clouds by using this brush. So just pulling and kind of twirling around and flicking and dusting. It's kind of a different look. Um, so you can use a few different brushes for creating clouds. I'm actually going to be doing a video in the future uh, very soon just on painting clouds and all the different kinds of clouds you can make um, because that is something I get asked quite often. Um, people always are afraid and intimidated by painting clouds, so I'm gonna show you guys how easy it is to paint them. I'm gonna take some sap green now and some neon orange and a little bit of black, and I'm using a more fluid type of black today as well. Normally I use um, the heavy bodied black and I'm gonna take those the black and the orange and I'm going to kind of pull a line across and then dab, tap and pull little lines underneath. So this will be the base for our floating tree in the sky. I'm going to mix a little bit of the white with a sap green and start tapping in some grass and moss. And then have a little highlight here. I'll begin my tree using black, a little bit of that sap green, and having it have those roots come right over the edges. Adding a little bit of orange to warm it up and create a, a nice little brown tone in there. And then I'm going to tap all those leaves and foliage on the tree. And then I'll add some white when I want to have a highlight and a lighter tone. So right here I just blend it slightly and then 
tap, tap, tap with that filbert brush. The filbert brush is really, really nice for creating um, treetops and uh, moss and all the foliage that we need for this painting. And then I'm just going to do a little twist and scoop and add one of my little archways right at the base of that tree. I'll wait for it to dry and then I will add a little bit of orange, a warm orange glow in there. I've got a light grass green now that I'm using just to change up those green tones. Have a few different types of greens going on and hues. Take a little bit of orange, a little bit of black, for a nice shadow and some deep contrast there. And I'm just going to push off some of this excess paint I have. I've got a bit too much there and it's taking a lot longer to dry than I want it to. So I'm scoop it off and then I add a fresh thin coat of white and then just a little dab of the orange. And I'm using neon orange today, but you can use whatever orange you have. And I'm going to use my filbert brush to add a few more peaks and soft little scoops to these clouds with just a hint of that orange in there. Okay, so after adding a few more highlights, clean my brush, got all the white off, and I'm going to take some sap green, orange, and a little bit of black and start pulling little lines across and changing the direction. So I'll pull some lines more towards the left and then come down and pull them more off to the right. And then we've got this cute little floating staircase leading up to that tree. So we'll just add a little shadow to them and then we'll add a little bit of a highlight after using that light green and white. Add a little, just little branches in there. And we'll have some drippy moss hanging off to the side of this staircase and then we'll tap in some moss on either side of those stairs giving the illusion that maybe there's a bit of a railing there, something to hold on to. And then a little highlight with white and the bright green. I'm still painting wet on wet. I'm not waiting for anything to dry. Okay, with a clean liner brush, I'm going in with more of that orange, a little bit of white, and I'll just add some light coming from that little doorway or archway right above the stairs, maybe on the first and first few stairs there. Now I've got new neon red that I'm um, going to try here. Um, it's not as nice as the whole the whole bean or whole bind. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it, but. It's, it's okay, I just ran out of my Holbein and I had this stored away and I thought I would take it out and give it a try. So I put a little bit too much on here and I'm just going to scoop off the excess. So this is a good tip for you guys to know if you, if you put too much paint on, don't worry, you can just kind of push it off and then it'll look a lot better. So it's better to do that than to try and add more and more paint. So I'm using a little bit of that red, a little bit of white, creating a soft pinky color. And just want to add some pretty little flowers. And now I've got my cadmium yellow, so I'm going to squeeze out just a little drop of that. And I'm going to create some nice sunny highlights, nice warm highlights for um, a few of the areas here. A little bit on the tree, by those flowers. 
and right there at the base of that archway. So I'm just going to pull softly and flick off to make it look kind of like it's a weeping willow tree or there's moss hanging down and the paint is still wet so I can easily do that by just pulling some of it down and flicking. Okay, so I'm going to quickly lay out all the colors I need for my rainbow and then I'm going to change my water and make sure it's nice and clean. I'm going to take white on my filbert brush and begin doing a layer of white first and then I'll be adding the color after. You need to have a nice soft, um, almost semi-transparent base first in order for your color to really show up and not mix in with that blue in the background. So I've just tinted my white with a neon red first and I'm going to go almost all the way down but I want it to look like it's just kind of disappearing and fading off into those clouds. The brightest it's going to be is kind of right in the middle of it. And then I've got neon orange. I'm going to be using cadmium yellow, turquoise, more phthalo blue and my neon purple violet. And each color should slightly overlap into the one before. You need a lot of patience when you're um, painting a rainbow. Um, so this actually took the longest out of everything else that I painted um, and what's really important is to know that every color you pick up you want to tint it with a little bit of white that way that color will stay that nice bright color that it is um, if you're gonna put the orange over top of the blue sky when it dries it's not really gonna look orange anymore because if you mix orange and blue together it's gonna make brown but if you have that little bit of white in there, that will cut that and then it will keep it that nice bright peachy orange color that you want. So that's a really um, important tip you guys, always tint your colors with a little bit of white for your rainbows. Now once you have um, uh, the colors that you want and they're the tone that you want, they should be like a, a vivid but yet still so soft and pastel-like. Um, once you have that bit of white there and it's dried, you can begin to add a little bit more color and less white. So if you want your rainbow to pop a little bit more, it's safe to go ahead and add another little layer, which I'm doing right now. I'm just taking that neon red and then I go to the neon orange and I try to just add a little, little tiny bit of that, just, you know, a little bit at a time. And of course you're adding the red, then the orange, then yellow, green, then blue. And you'll put the neon purple violet right after the blue and partially on the blue. And that way you'll change the tone of the blue that's the same as the sky and it'll look a little bit different and not get lost. So remember at the bottom of your rainbow you want it to just softly fade away into those clouds and disappear. And then you can start your next rainbow or you can just do one, you don't have to do two. Um, I really wanted to do a double rainbow, I've never painted a double rainbow before. 
and I hear they bring very good luck. So I'm painting this um, thinking of you guys all and wishing you lots of luck today. I'm going to add my white base with a red, then come in with an orange again, then yellow, turquoise, and so on and so on and do those same colors. really got to make sure you if you want your yellow to stand out you really got to add that white with it otherwise the yellow over top of the blue is going to make green of course so I want this second rainbow to be smaller and a little bit more faded so I'm putting the color on and then I'm going to soften and slightly blend it off so adding a little bit of white to soften those colors and then pulling it off and then coming in with some more peaks and highlights on the clouds down here still using my filbert brush and titanium white And I'm really trying to make this a uh, light purple violet show up so I'm going to go over it a little bit more and add a little bit, try to sneak a little bit more of that blue in there with the purple. And you can definitely use a smaller brush. If you want to use a liner brush you can. I really like using the filbert brush. I find that I have more control and it's easier for me when it comes to rainbows. Um, sometimes the liner brush is more hard to control when painting um, a nice um, straight or curved line. When you want to paint branches that are a little bit more crooked but they're uh, finer in detail, then the liner brush really works well for that. But it's whatever works for you and everybody's different. So I'm just going to add a little bit more of color here. And I've changed my um, water a couple of times. I wanted to, well, especially when I was finished with the tree and I was about to begin my rainbow, I wanted to change my water so that it was nice and clean and I didn't have the chance of muddying up any of these colors for the rainbow with what was in the water before, like a little bit of black and a little bit of green. Okay, I'm gonna start coming in with some more highlights over here on the clouds and as well as a few other areas. And then I'll start working on um, some more highlights along the stairs and softening up underneath the rainbow. So what I'm doing is with a slightly damp brush, I'm scumbling off a little bit of that blue to give it a fuzzy, hazy, glowy look underneath the rainbow. Okay, I'm now going to take more of that light grass green with just a little bit of that light thin down white and start tapping in to build up some more highlights here along the staircase. Then a little bit of black and work on more contrast right here, depth and shadow. A few little lines in between the staircase.
Okay, I'm going to make sure my brush is clean, slightly dry, and then I'm going to pull in directly into that phthalo blue. And I'm going to start to add more blue right next to this little floating island and in the sky. This will help to give us more depth as well. I'm going to take a little bit of white and just pull and flick, maybe indication of a little waterfall. I'm going to clean my brush out again really well, pick up some of the light purple violet, a little bit more white. And once again, add a final coat. There, that looks pretty. And then wash my brush out again, and then I'm going to tap very softly where those branches are. So they're kind of blending in together, the rainbow and the branches. Okay, now I'm going to go back to a little filter of phthalo blue. So my brush is slightly wet and I'm scumbling over top to add some more shadows and depth in the sky. And then I'm going to take just a little bit of that uh, white with a tiny bit of light purple violet and pick up some sap green I wanted this to look a little bit narrower down here at the bottom and then kind of almost blurred and kind of fade away and disappear. So I'm going to add that, wash my brush off and dry it, pick up a little bit of white. And I'm using my thick titanium white heavy bodied now. I'm going to create sort of a cloud effect over those stairs and then wipe off the excess on my towel if I pick up a little bit of that green um, and then take more white lightly tap and scumble over so this will help us get pulled in and drawn to the center of the painting and kind of not down on the bottom we want to just look at what's going on in the center and have that the focal point of the painting so by blurring up this area down on the bottom it'll really help to do that and then I'm adding a little bit more blue okay so this painting is all done thank you so much for joining me you guys I'm happy I got to share this with you please like and subscribe to my channel and if you'd like early access and some exclusive content you can head over to my patreon page and become a patron today thanks so much for supporting me you guys i'll see you in my next video really soon bye